let me uh, pause the music here, and uh, we can watch this Bellular video while we wait for the group to fill. Hey, it's news time. There is a oh. lot to cover today, so before we get stuck into the Dragonflight stuff, Since I'm going to rocket you Since through. Since when does PvP the... gear not get love? Well, some some expansions it's just been a tint recolor of a tier set or something. Yeah. Rest. It's actually some neat stuff. Blizzard are juicing up Buzz in World of Warcraft with a 50% XP buff for the modern servers from now to the launch of Season 4. So, nice. For me, really, that's just uh, good Thank if you want to get more characters watered. ready so it's you can have more Dragonflight it's professions. True. Now also, the fated raid schedule for Season 4 has yes, been released. we talked about this. We did. We talked about the fated raid schedule, and uh, here it is. We got Castle, Castle Nathria, Sanctum of Domination, and then Sepulchre of the First Ones. Um, followed by the rotation re-entering, you know, Castle Nathria Sanctum, Sepulchre of the First Ones again, and then eventually it opens up to, uh, it's to all It's essentially what we would expect with, eventually, every single Fated Raid being open uh, at the same time. Yeah. In case you didn't know, Fated is just the uh, little nomenclature or whatever that uh, increases difficulty and loot to Season 4 levels and adds on an affix. Initially, it's on Rot 1 Raid per week. Finally then, Wrath Classic! Seems like it's going to drop September 26th, according to an asset that Blizzard accidentally published on the classic <laughs> site and then removed. Yeah, Whoops. we saw that right when we okay. opened the launcher. Streams. Good morning, War Bandit. Four channels of content, an upcoming video game, plus a few other things we're working on. We're doing a lot here, so if you would like to support us in our mission of, honestly, just making cool shit, you can check out our Patreon. It's the best way to support us, and you can even get your class-themed loot by our development team. Uh, class cards, creature pins, the art that uh, one day might turn into something more. Don't worry, not an NFT. And uh, it's they need to bring out P patch uh, for Weapon the Lich King. I mean, come on, the it's coming out in two months. Uh, well, they do have beta signups going on, so uh, epic doom. So we'll see. We'll see. We don't have that shit. It's awesome. Of course, it helps us make the cool shit. You get some cool shit. You guys what? It's a win-win. That's the best. Okay. Dragonflight. Well, isn't this what we all wanted to hear? Ian told Crandor that they're going to release to more frequent but smaller patches. Now, this is absolutely fantastic news, and it's totally the opposite of Shadowlands. Legion expansion was lauded for its aggressive patch cycle, as was Mists of Pandaria. Well, Epic, if you want the classic experience, you're going to have to be undergeared because Death Knight, when Wrath came out, right, you were behind. If you made a Death Knight, you were behind. You had to level up and gear out at the same time while everyone else was already, you know, cap level and ready to go. So there weren't... There's a, no, we had pre-patch. We had pre-patch. Yeah, we had pre-patch, but he, he still, I mean, you were behind. I mean, I'm sure they're going to drop it. They're going to drop Death Knight slightly before, you know, if they want to keep it classic. But uh, making a Death Knight, I mean, you, you, did, you did somewhat start yourself behind if you made a Death Knight. Lauded for its aggressive patch cycle, as was Mists of Pandaria, where we saw point one and point three. Be they want to keep patches, it classic. I guess they should give us the same amount of time. I forgot how much time patches. we had. Now, an approach like this is what a live game actually needs to survive. You were behind on tier pieces. That's well. true. But the whole game experience is not forced to march to the drumbeat of what makes a reasonably paced raid season, which is an odd thing to wrap the entire game experience around. So hopefully this means narrative updates, nice. side content, minor features, and just stuff that actually builds out the world and gives you something cool to do. Hopefully that can make it in in between raids. Uh, for example, in an earlier interview, Ian said that they are looking to do something a bit like the Mage Tower. And it's likely going to be themed around the nice. bronze dragons and the Deaths of Chromie scenario. I mean, would that not be an awesome thing to drop right in the middle of a raid tier? You know, three months in, you're a bit bored. Oh, look, there's new shit to do. That is what WoW has needed but lacked. Indeed, in Late Wad and Legion, the developers talked about wanting raids to not hold back other forms of content. Right. And in Legion, they actually largely achieved that. Yeah, People no, may Legion forget rating this, was, was but good. But Broken Shore and Argus, the, like patch zones, they came out before their associated raid tiers. Yes, by they quite did. Quite some time. Yeah. Right. A good plan. And that's true. Course, like I remember going to Argus and you seeing the raid entrance, but you can't enter the raid yet. And that was cool, questing around the zone, knowing that eventually we're going to get in. Damn it. 
Damn it, Cadgar. Are you serious right now? I'm trying something new. Um, w basically, it was it was it was a nice way uh, to kind of get yourself hyped for the raid because you're in the zone, but you can't yet enter the raid. Of a whole new development team to Warcraft, perhaps it's actually one they're incredibly going to be OP. Able I mean, uh, for a hero class, you're talking about evokers. You're saying hero. You're not sure how you feel about them. They feel incredibly OP. Uh, speaking of Wrath Classic, let's not forget Death Knights were incredibly OP. There were five man Death Knight groups. I mean, there were there were groups. I remember there were groups running five man dungeons with two Blood DKs and three Frost DKs. That was something that was possible back then because Blood DK healing was so OP that they could tank without a healer, and uh, and Frost DKs were doing such crazy damage that they didn't even need to heal uh, at that point, and everyone could just you know everyone was just surviving on Death Strike. So I mean, a hero class entering the game being OP at first, that's okay. I don't mind it. They'll 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 balance it out eventually, but it kind of does fit with the lore too. When a hero class enters in, let them feel like a hero. Right, let them be a little bit OP for a month or so, until like raid content and stuff starts to hit, and then it really does matter. Able to pull off. Only yeah, time will exactly. Tell. Like Day said, they'll like be nerfed. Like the idea. And speaking of time, what's up, Ghost Something Badger. else. Ha! The time skip has finally happened. Uh, Blizzard have yet to confirm exactly by how much, but yes, perhaps years have actually passed since the end of Shadowlands. Now, we actually know this via dialogue that appeared in a recent alpha build, which is actually the thing that does throw Good morning, a little Raina. bit of doubt or suspicion into this. But basically, people who had done certain quests on a past build of the alpha saw a new dialogue trigger. Now, we're not uh. sure if this was a bug, so this could still be a scrapped idea. But to put the whole thing briefly, several years have passed says since that Azeroth's been heroes several returned from the realms of death. Ah, so a bit of a time gap. Years since we returned from the Shadowlands. What is several? Well, I'm thinking three to five. Now, if true, this would allow for a period of peace along. and stabilization amongst the factions. It could also make the game world and its timeline just feel a little bit more sensible instead of a humongous existential threat every single two years. It also opens up the way for the likes of the Forsaken to just be more settled in. But doing that time skip also puts certain expectations on Blizzard. Where are the Night Elves? Where have they started building their new settlements? What's going on? Yeah, we're, so I mean, as you we're, can see, it's the, a fantastic we saw the moon stuff opportunity, down but it's also years to fill in. Now, a song of Ice and Fire author George R. R. Martin was originally going to have a time skip after Storm of Swords. Why did he not do that? Well, he felt too many flashback chapters. Ultimately, that time in the story still had to be filled. So mm, while there are true. fantastic world-building opportunities, there are also challenges. And when faced with having to do half a million flashbacks, Martin, of course, just continued the timeline without doing a time skip in his novels. For Blizzard, I think doing limited flashbacks and normal limited jailer and mythic of what has happened yesterday? since, along with targeted At small world updates, level, damn. that could be a good way to go if they have the time. Now, Anduin, rather notably, is missing. And the characters are basically just uh, assuming that he's going to return when Maybe he wants day. to. Now, this, of course, is what we expected at the end of the Shadowlands expansion. We did. We did talk about this, you know, pre-Shadowlands and going to Shadowlands. We did talk about the fact that, hey, maybe a time skip would happen. Now, I thought personally that the time skip might be more significant. I don't know if you guys remember, but do you, um, Blizzard always released, like, those animated comic books, right? They'd release them on their website. And there was one where Anduin was very old in the comic book. Like, he was significantly old, and it was about fighting something, and, um, oh my god, the, Dra the Draenei leader was there. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, but, um, and he's asking him, are you ready? And then Anduin was like, yes, one more fight kind of line. Uh, that was, like, a, a an interesting thing, and I thought, oh, maybe we're going to come back time-skipped, and Anduin's going to be old, or maybe the, the Lich King... Like the power of the Lich King that had run through him recently. Velen, yes. Prophet Velen was his name. He was the one standing next to Anduin in that comic book. And I thought maybe this Lich King power was going to age Anduin or something. And that's how he was going to look like he did. Because that comic book still had, really hasn't come to fruition yet. And uh, maybe it won't ever. Maybe they'll just say retcon it out or something. But that's a thing, something to keep in mind. Time skipping and all that stuff is going to happen, I'm sure. Where, uh, well... I suppose it's just this way. 
Maybe Andrin's just soul-searching for a few years. This is fun stuff to muse about, but we do have no idea if this is Blizzard's plan. I mean, that it appeared in the alpha certainly could suggest so, but plot points have appeared in alpha and then been taken away before. This certainly would open up the way for a killer prequel novel that could fill in that time and be an awesome read for those of us who do the reading in the books. True, true. But of course, in Ian's own words, if too much is in the novel, then it would be a narrative disruption. So, what do you think? A Pish. funny map name got We got, got 10.1. Oh, Dragon Isles Underground. Warning, must be kept flagged development map until 10.1. Huh. Whoops. <laughs> it wasn't. The warning was not heeded. So we have no idea if this will actually be the setting of 10.1. It could be an old idea. It could be just part of a 10.1 patch. But we can take it at face value. 10.1. We're, so we're, we're, we're already a patch in the Dragonflight. Razageth, the Storm Incarnate. What about the others? Well, we've got fire, we've got ice, we've got earth. Fire and earth being underground? Well, that I've said it before, I'll sense. say it again. Razageth reminds me of Ratatesh. The Pokemon. The name. Sense. Not very creative. If the Vault of the Incarnates, where we defeat Razageth, is the 10.0 raid, which it is, by the way, yes, then it is. maybe 10.1 is completing more of the Incarnate story while sort of thrusting us into the broader expansion narrative arc. That could potentially make some sense. I mean, the Primalists seem to be allied with the Infinite Dragonflight, and there certainly are rumblings about Galakron's bones. There's more of that later in today's video, let me tell you. That's, I mean, all you need for an expansion in terms of plot beats, basically. Morning, folks. Going what up, Dirt of course, Pirate? would also probably see more Black Dragon story stuff continue, where, of course, we know that Rathian yeah. and Sibelian are currently vying for leadership. With you actually having Sabellian? a Who the hell's Sabellian? Who the hell's that? I don't know anything about a Sabellian. I thought it was going to be between Rathian and, um, and the Artoran friend. Sabellian. Oh. Sabellian. Here he is. Sabellian, also known as Baron Sabellian, Sa uh, Sablemane. Is a black dragon, son of the black dragon aspect, Deathwing. What the fuck? So Deathwing has a second son? Where? When did this happen? So now it's between Rathian and this guy? Oh shit, I had no idea. I, I had no idea that he had a second son. I was reading this right now. This is where it says it. This is what he, this is what he looks like. I guess he was an in-game tune. I had no idea. Interesting. I thought it was going to be between Rathian and Ebonhorn. I wonder what's going on with Ebonhorn, then. Reputation bar for each of them, which is pretty neat. Weird, so, I'm not finding the group. It's in custom group right, finder. It does tie into the incarnate threat. It could tie into whatever Titan tech is under the so eyes. Go, uh, it does make sense for the remaining incarnates to, to be there. Groups, you'll and, see of it course, in there. the black dragons are charged with the defense and of the Earth itself. So, makes sense. All right, what else, then? I want to take a moment to update you in the testing process because this time it's been fantastic compared to the past. Say I want a dragon and another dragon fall deeply in love. <laughs> Feedback has already been acted on with the Drakthir visage and of course with numerous class talent trees as well. They recently said that actually their focus for class time and I kind of assume their focus when actually budgeting what their staff are doing through this development cycle uh, that it's more focused on feedback and iteration. And so far they do seem to be making good on that. So that's nice. Now, past betas from my experience, we're often more focused on building systems out, right? Like your Azerite and your Covenants, but doing- Fairly new to WoW and learning a bit about the lore while I, while I work. Nice, nice. Yes, join us. It's a good time always in the morning, and if you ever miss our morning streams, check out our YouTube. We always post our, uh, our WoW lore discussions and everything on there. So, to the point where there basically wasn't much time for iteration on those things. Meaning that they had to launch with foundational up, flaws. Something which partially sunk BFA and Shadowlands. True. I mean, unless that ripcord did actually exist. Anyway, the point is, things are kind of on the up. As planned, Blizzard also have deactivated the Azure span. And the Love new these build zones, gave man. us access to the Drakthir starting zone, as well as two dungeons. Uh, not only is this, honestly, a bit of an exciting way to do it, like every week is... I was thinking yesterday about where, what the Drakthir starting zone reminds me of, and it hit me. 
It reminds me of Crystal Song Forest from Northrend. It was the crystal, little crystal trees, the snow, the purple shit everywhere. It's Crystal Song Forest. It looks like a remake of Crystal Song Forest uh, and then add some dragon buildings and stuff in there. I mean, uh, the Blizzard did say they took a lot of inspiration from Northrend for uh, for these zones, and it and I it is it's just showing. It reminds me of it. Kind of new and fresh. Come, but it also produces let far us more play waste to, to this that. realm. Zen, Zen Metis, Metsu, thank you for the follow and welcome to our sh- uh, scourge. Hunters are then a prime example of this. Their new talent system is up, we've had a few rounds of iteration, and you can see that there have been detailed comments from the devs, and actual changes made. So it's great to see this happen. Oh yeah, they're responding say, to feedback, GG, that's for sure. Let's keep up this momentum. I cannot tell you whether this expansion will be good, but I can say that the test period can does tell they're feel trying. better than the others. They're trying, that's for sure. The latest Alder brought Dragons. two dungeons, one which may tie into... We the reviewed this dungeon yesterday, earlier, too. ...while the other one is Alderman, the Legacy of Tyr. Yeah, yes. and the art team are completely on fire, as always. Anyway, what's neat is that the end of the dungeon, Chrono Lord Deus pops in, and he tries oh, to shit. stop us from gaining a disc that is apparently key to the aspects regaining their power. Yeah, not seeing the group now, on my alliance character. He seems to succeed. The disc but see it on my horde. Oh, shit. You're right. I'm probably going to have to list this as a cross-faction. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm not sure if... if uh... Oh, shit. Okay. You know what I'll do? Um, hold on. I forgot about that. Cross-faction won't work like this. Edit cross faction. I you can't uh, use cross faction in custom groups. I think. Oh my God, Oldaman again. Yes, we are going back to Oldaman. I will fix this uh, after the video. Apparently lost time. That makes me wonderful. I think I'm gonna have to post it as a normal content. raid. But anyway, his final line is: the timelines are converging. There will only be one aspect, and Morazon shall be infinite. So. Does that not tell us that this expansion may finally be where we see Nozdomu return? And I guess what's kind of neat is that I think this old man is what we're going to get. Next. Come, let us so lay waste to cool. this realm. Dirt Pirate, thank you for the follow and welcome to our scourge. Fascinating, then, because of Created what Morazon Created in Legacy, says, yeah, I'm going to have to make it under... In the Cataclysm expansion. I'm going to do so an Invincible run here. Fight, he says this. You crawl unwitting like a blind, writhing worm towards endless madness and oh, despair. Shit. I oh, have shit. witnessed the true end time. This, this is a blessing you simply cannot comprehend. Oh, Don't know about shit. you, but I think that's kind of spooky. Perhaps more so, this is what he says after the fight. You know not what you have done, Amenthul. What I have seen. Well then, casting doubt oh, in the Titans. Shit. Blizzard have been doing that since at least the Cataclysm, and uh, they've also somewhat developed that over the last few years. Come also, for this so Val obviously had a larger threat to this realm. Now, if Blizzard were to... Dude, Dirt Pirate, thank you for subscribing to our YouTube. Thank you, man. Keep the framing of that threat wholly with Zoval in What's his up, story, Lucian? then that would be a pretty darn large failure given how lame Zoval was. But if they were able... So what we're, what's going to happen is Invincible and Gmod are only runnable um, on the same faction. So we're going to have to do Invincible and Gmod uh, as a horde group, and then we can open it up when we do Hellfire Core and um, the Iron Hoof mount uh, to cross faction. So we're going to have to do Invincible and Gmod first. Able to just continue with the plotline that they hinted at in the end time dungeon, then that essentially would be a convenient way to sidestep Zovel, make him feel just less relevant, less important. I think that would be a good idea. Anyway, who knows? There's probably a lore video on this topic to be made. What I do know, though, is that this all feels more Warcraft than the Shadowlands stuff did. Going into unexplored Titan vaults, fighting infinite dragons, the mystery of what the infinite dragonflight's goal even is. This is stuff we've been talking about since the Burning Crusade, so it's nice that a new WoW expansion is picking that up. From what I'm told, this one's actually kind of big, so I had many tweets, I had many excited stream comments as well. 
In so case you missed it, Hearthstone has been quietly knocking it out of the park for the last few years when it comes to Warcraft yeah, narrative content that actually does... Welcome, man. Thanks for doing all the lore. Yes, no problem. No problem. Crazy we end up on the same stream as Ghost Badger. Ghost Badger's cool. Like Warcraft. Maybe a bit more goofy sometimes, but if you play the Book of Mercenaries, you'll see the core WoW feel. Now... Reno Jackson is part of the Explorers. I'll let the group get bigger before we do GMAT. That's what we're going to start with him. role in a few of Hearthstone's different storylines. Now, he and his friends fight many different foes, including Rafam, who is an ethereal who does things like, uh, I don't uh. know, trying to resurrect Galakrond. You know, the planet ending oh, dragon shit. threat. Oh, shit. So is he in the expansion? Kind of walk through his bones during Wrath of the Lich King. Also, yeah. Reno Jackson, uh, he's actually a blue dragon called Renegos. So there's that. Oh, Hearthstone people shit. Some Hearthstone characters are going to show up in the expansion. I kind of like that. The cross play between them. It's always been Warcraft stuff showing up in Hearthstone. Now it's Hearthstone stuff showing up in Warcraft. I love Rafam. He appears to be a really fun villain who's just quite well executed. And World of Hearthcraft. Mind, we yeah. now think he may actually be <laughs> part of Dragonflight. I think that's pretty neat. Now, that is cool. Of course, I've got to ensure that prior Hearthstone knowledge is not needed to enjoy the character in this expansion. The right, they're going to have to flush the character out in the game. He's a well-loved villain with a fantastic vocal performance that people really enjoy. So that's a great opportunity. And it does mean I need to play through all of that Hearthstone content, and someday I'll come back to you with a lower video explaining what I found. So, there we have it. Lots of news this week. Actually, mostly fun stuff. Very cool. Of course, cool. we're not actually at the stage of Alpha where I can test Endgame. And if you are suspicious about the generally positive Dragonflight mood, uh, bear that in mind. It's not that Blizzard <laughs> has showered anyone with money, at least not me, but we've seen the bit that is routinely pretty good. Yeah, and the questing and Warlords nice of Draenor had good like questing. The talents seem neat. The professions seem neat. Good time neat. to level our ults right now, 50% really XP buff. Zones yes, that's true. 50% XP buff has arrived. So if you do want to level alt, it is a good time really to level. Really cool. So there will be a time for critique, as there always is. And that's almost certainly going to be endgame when we fully see gearing. We see yeah. endgame content. Endgame's we is see what's there for the what world we're going to judge the expansion on. If you're kind of wondering where the criticism is, honestly, it's that what we've seen right now is pretty damn great. But there still are unknowns for the future. Now, in case you missed our content, check out our investigation into the Sepulchre of the First Ones here. Yeah, we, we watched that deep yesterday. Dive into the Very true. Revamp, which is also on the channel. I do want to say, as far video, as... Which is a big list of small but generally great things that we've learned about Dragonflight. And then, of course, hit up our Patreon to support my growing team and all the cool stuff that we want to make here for you. And you can even get that dope merch that is made by our Game Studios team.